your life demonstrates what you value. Because even though you may momentarily be distracted by other people, you spontaneously are called to do certain things in your life. If I look at my life daily, uh, nobody has to remind me to get on my computer and research. And nobody has to remind me to get on and do the webinars or the podcast or writing articles. I mean, I do it every day, every day, seven days a week. And your life demonstrates your values. And if you look at what you do spontaneously every day, the things that you fill your space with, the things you spend your time on, the things that energize you, the things your money goes towards, the things that you're very highly organized in, the thing that you're most disciplined spontaneously in, the things you think about and visualize and talk to yourself about, about how you really want your life that is showing evidence, and I'm emphasizing it, that shows evidence of coming true, the thing you keep bringing in conversations to when you're talking to others, the thing that inspires you with tears in your eyes, or the things that's common to people inspire you, the things that you have on goals that are coming true in your life that you've written, and the things you can't wait to learn. Spontaneously, you just want to learn it. Look carefully at what you keep wanting to learn. All those point in the direction of a very clear path of values that you value, because you spontaneously want to learn about what's valuable to you, spontaneously want to do what's valuable to you. It is your brain is designed to do and live and fulfill the telos. A telos is the highest value. So your identity revolves around that. Everybody wants to be loved and appreciated for that. And you want to be fulfilled with that. But just know this. Don't expect to be loved and appreciated for being yourself if you're not willing to be yourself. And that's an eye opener to people because you can't expect others to love you for who you are when you're not even willing to be who you are. And so many people conform inject the values of others, cloud the clarity of their own highest value, and don't look objectively at what their life is demonstrating important to them, and then have an internal conflict between what they think they need to do by duty, deontological duty, should, supposed to, has got to, has have to, has must, well, I got, I got a job, I got to drive, I got to do this, I got to do that, I have to do this, I should do this, I'm supposed to do this. That's an imperative world that splits people up, run by the pseudo- pseudo self, which vacillates your self image of yourself, instead of living authentically, according to your own highest values, where you have a free willed state, and you're working with the universe. And um, so identifying the top value is most important, the one thing that is most important in your life. And maybe the second or third, or maybe the fourth at the most, that's where most of your life is focused. My highest value is teaching. Second highest value is researching and writing. Third highest value was traveling, and that's my focus because I travel 20 million miles, hell. So if I look carefully at what my life demonstrates, it's really blatant. So if you look anywhere but what your life is demonstrating objectively, you're looking probably based on what you think it should be, an ideology around you, mothers, fathers, preachers, teachers, mores, conventions, traditions around you about how you're supposed to be. And I don't give a damn about that when I'm trying to work with my clients and break you, because those are not where you're going to excel. You're going to excel in your highest value. And so I, I in the breakthrough experience and also my uh, web, website, I got a value determination process. It's free. I tell people to go to it every, every now, go to a week from now, a month from now, a quarter from now, and every quarter from now on out and document it and Answer those questions on there, 13 questions as objectively you can, and get clear about what it is that's really important to you. And don't lie. Don't compare it to what it used to be or what you fantasize or what you wish it would be, but get real and look at what you spontaneously can't wait to do in the morning. Because the second you structure your life and fill your day with those high priority things that serve ever greater numbers of people, that allow you to have fair, sustainable exchange in economics to delegate all else down the list off your plate. You are on your way to having an inspired life. And that is absolutely doable and livable. But that's not going to happen unless you identify that. So number one in those six steps of living an inspired and meaningful life is identifying what that is. That one thing and the top three things where your life revolves around it, and that's your, your greatest momentum building identity. I took a lady who is a 
a, a pole vault specialist in Melbourne, Australia, who's uh, going for the Olympics and was a medalist. And, and this this girl, when I went down the value determination process, it was, I mean, 100% pole vaulting. It was amazing congruency. I've run into very few people that are congruent. Most people live in a delusion about what their values are. I've been doing assessments of values for 42 years. This lady was congruent. I met another lady in from Israel, unbelievably congruent. But most people have skewed ideas and have internal conflicts between what they think is important and what's important in their life. Go by what your life demonstrates, not your words. Don't go by what's expected from the world around you. Go from the heart within you. I said on the secret when the voice and the vision on the inside is louder than all opinions on the outside, that's when you get to master your life. So the first one is identifying and knowing the top three highest values, the top one most important. If you can delegate everything but the top one, you're on your way to amazing life. Now, what that means is the second you identify what that highest value is, as Aristotle said, your highest value, your telos, is your purpose. It's the your mission in life. My mission is teaching. My purpose is teaching. I got a pretty good track record, 47 plus years, almost 48 years of doing it. And uh, that's it. And what happens is the more congruent you are with that, the more you've structured your life around that, the more you've delegated everything off your plate but that, the more you build momentum, achieve, your self-worth goes up, your space and time horizons expand, your executive center is able to see a vision in V5, V6 of the visual cortex, the associative areas of the cortex. You get a bigger vision, you expand your vision in space and time, and you give yourself permission to do something greater. So that highest value, knowing that, and then structuring your life according to it so you can live a purposeful and meaningful and fulfilling life, because when you live by your highest value, you have the most fulfillment. Your purpose is the most efficient and effective pathway to fulfill the greatest amount of voids in life with the greatest amount of value. And the voids in life come from all the disowned parts that we're too proud or too humble to admit we have when we judge people. We're here not to judge, we're here to love. Empedocles, sixth century, fifth century BC, said very clearly, way back when he talked about the four elements, he originated that. He says, there's love and strife in the world and there's a path we can take. We can live by our path of love, which is living by our highest value, or we're going to end up in a world of strife because we're not following what the calling in our heart is. So yes, finding out what that highest value is, that's our mission, and that expands our vision, and our vision becomes lucidly clear. And if we got a clear vision, we have vitality. Your vitality in life is directly proportional to the vividness of the vision, and your vision is automatically, when it's clear, you have vitality and energy, and also that any detail you leave out of that vision means you're not really caring to fit in the details. One of the signs you're living congruently is you love to metric what you're doing. You love to get refinement of it. You get to look at what's working and not working and you fill in the gaps and get clearer and clearer and more refined on the mission and the vision. Those with a vision flourish. Those without a vision perish. Those with a mission make a difference. Those without a mission wander around and subdue themselves to subordinating other people, conforming. Not, not really standing out, they fit in. You're not going to make a difference fitting in. You're going to make a difference standing out. Well, this is a, a, in conjunction what I've said already. But if you're not asking the question, what is the highest priority action I can do today that can help me fulfill my primary mission, highest value, my purpose in life? That's a very important question. Mary Kay from Mary Kay Cosmetics asked me that question, told me to ask myself that question every day. And I did that. And I wrote them all on index cards for a long time. And then I looked at what was the common answer that kept showing up day after day after day. And it showed up very simple, research, write, travel, teach. And so I basically spend my day doing exactly that, research, write, travel, teach. I don't do as much traveling temporarily because of the coronavirus or whatever, the St. Corona. But I'm doing it on Zoom. I've been in more countries now since the Corona's come around than any before because I'm reaching people in every major city. The other day I did a breakthrough experience. There's somebody in, in Madagascar listening in, somebody in Mongolia listening in. They would not normally be able to be at the programs. Uh, their flights are not as easy and they don't come. 
but now they can come. So I'm now reaching people in every country on the face of the earth, which was my long-term vision. So yeah, by prioritizing and filling your day with high priority actions, you gain the most momentum, gain the most energy, end up with the most creativity because genius and creativity occurs when you're pursuing challenges that inspire you. And when you're filling your day with high priority actions, you love tackling challenges. And that's how you wake up your leader. Your leadership automatically emerges when you're going after and pursuing challenges that really inspire you. <clears throat> so following your highest priorities and doing that every day is amazing. If you live by highest priority, your energy is going to go up, your achievements are going to go up, your confidence is going to go up, your leadership is going to go up, your expand who you are is going to go up, uh, your space and time horizon is going to go up, your executive center function is going to go up, your clarity of vision is going to go up, your magnetism of opportunity is going to go up, the people are going to look up to you and respect you is going to go up. You're more real and the objectives that you set. You're less likely to set up fantasies that are self-defeating. I could go on and on and on on the value of living by the highest priority, highest value. Priority, if you go to back to Emmanuel Kant, you'll see that a priority, which is basically a divine deducted will coming through, is a state that Christians call the, the Holy Spirit touches an individual and calls them into action from a theological perspective from a scientific perspective is when the forebrain is maximizing its executive function and allows you to have the greatest self-governance and the least amount of distraction. So from religious or scientific point, that same priority leads to the same outcome. And it's been stated in religion and science and mysticism and philosophy and physics ever since. So give yourself permission to go and live by priority. That's where you get the greatest self-worth. Your self-worth will grow if you do that. The, the executive center, uh, which is the medial prefrontal cortex, it's in the telencephalon, which is the outer layer of the brain, in the fore part of the brain, underneath the front, prefrontal, so it's right underneath the front of the brain. This is the most significant area, the medial area, right in the center on the front. This area has fibers that go right into the nucleus accumbens and the striatum, the pallidum, and it actually calms down the impulse pleasure-seeking area, which distracts you with infatuations, and calms down the instinct avoidance of pain areas and calms down the subconsciously um, stored bullshit that's been running in your head that the, that's ruminating in your head is brain noise and calms it down, centers you with what they have, GABA, which is an inhibitory transmitter and glutamate, which is a stimulatory transmitter that comes in there and regulates those impulses and instincts and keeps you from being distracted. And we call that self-governance. That's why it's called the executive center because the executive center in the brain is able to give you self-governance. And self-governance means that you stick to your strategy and objective, not get swayed by impulses and instincts. If you go into shopping and you go in there with a piece of paper and you got a list on the piece of paper and the list on the piece of paper has got your priorities of what you're gonna go buy, you have a higher probability of getting what you set out to do, going to it, getting in there and getting out of there and not getting distracted by impulse buying and just wandering around and aimlessly doing that. Because people that have no meaning and no purpose when they go shopping and are aimless and wandering and just impulse shopping are more likely to be swayed by external sales processes, gimmicks, deals, and, and overpriced stuff and brands from the external world. But the people who are centered are more likely to build a brand that they get paid and they build a great brand. One is is self-defeating economically, one is building economically. So yes, you automatically have governance over your own mind when you're living by your highest value because it activates the executive center. The blood glucose noxin goes into the forebrain and executive center when you're living by highest priority. It goes into the amygdala and the hindbrain where you learn by telonomics and trial and error, which is the least effective way of living when you live by the lower values. I cannot emphasize how important it is to do that. And your life is attempting to do it but the thing that stops you is the infatuation with people around you. That's why in the breakthrough experience, I have a tool on how to dissolve that. So you're not subordinating to people. You're giving yourself permission to be yourself because when you're authentic is when you get the most power. Well, that's what that happens. See, when you're, when you're infatuated with somebody, you minimize yourself. We've all had a situation where we admire something go, whoa, and we felt intimidated around them and minimized ourselves and didn't speak up and become more introverted around them because we let them dominate. 
And we've also been self-righteous looking down on somebody and resenting somebody and be the one that tells them what to do. That's why we inject the values more likely to inject the values when we're minimizing and project values extrovertedly onto somebody that we're looking down on. So when we're looking down and exaggerating ourselves, we're not authentic. When we're looking up and we're minimizing ourselves, we're not authentic. If we're not authentic, don't expect to be loved for who you are. You're not even being who you are. It's only when you're centered and you don't put people in pedestals or pits and you don't judge them, you love them and you see them with equanimity and equity. Now you're authentic. And when you look up and you minimize yourself, that's low self-esteem. And when you look down on somebody and put yourself up, that's so-called high self-esteem. But high self-esteem is a puffed up pride, a false ego, an inflated self. And the one that's low is a deflated self. And neither one of those are you. You're not here to exaggerate or minimize. You're here to here be you. Be thyself. Know thyself. Thyself is basically that highest value. That's where you're, that's the key. So when you're in your center and you're living by the highest value, you're more likely to have a centered state, which I call true self-worth. And that's why you grow your self-worth when you're living by priority and you vacillate yourself with manic depressive cycles, cyclothymia, in some cases, manic depressive disorder when you're living in your amygdala. And the more you live in your amygdala, the more you degenerate the oligodendrocytes uh, and, and shut down the, the myelinization. Your astrocytes absorb the myelin in the forebrain and destroy the executive function. That's why I'm, I'm here to stop people in the breakthrough experience from running their racket stories about being victims and their fantasies. When I see people running their stories about fantasies or running their stories about being victims, they are actually training their amygdala to dominate their executive center and giving away their power. Stop the story, get objective, get back on priority, focus on what's the meaning, your meaning and purpose in life and prioritize your daily life and go and serve. Whoa, what a different life there is. Massive life difference. I found out that uh, in my 20s, after reading a book by Alec McKinsey, I, The Time Trap, I realized that I had on my plate a lot of actions that were not high priority. I made a list of everything I did in a day. I looked at what it produced per hour. And I realized I was majoring in minor stuff and minoring in major stuff. And I was not living by priority when my 20, 27 years old. And I was overwhelmed. I was scattered. I was frustrated. I started my distraction resolution process then because I had to figure out a solution for it. And but I, once I realized that you're not here to live by lower priority things, that devalues you. And by the way, when you're devaluing yourself and doubting yourself and questioning yourself and self-minimizing yourself and beating yourself up, that is not a mistake. That is not a weakness. That is not, that is your body and mind doing what it's designed to do when you're not living congruently with who you are and your highest values. It's there to show you that's not the path. It's there to create entropy and breakdown and frustration to give you pain associated with going away from who you are and to get you back to who you are. It's misinterpreted by self-help people and positive thinking people that's, oh, you're supposed to live with your fantasy and go off on these positive things. They actually throw you off track. You need to know those are delusions and get onto objectives. A real objective has got two sides to it. A fantasy is a one-sided fantasy, which beats you up. So when you're living by your highest values, you don't have self-depreciation. But if you're not, you're going to. And that's why it's essential to learn to delegate lower priority things and get on with higher priority things. But until you can delegate, when I first found out I was doing low priority stuff, I didn't have anybody to delegate to. So I thought, okay, I got to find somebody to delegate that stuff to. So I put a system together that until you can delegate temporarily while you're doing low priority things, until you can find the person to delegate it in that little transition zone, until you find that delegation individual, how specifically is doing this action temporarily until I can delegate it, helping me fulfill my highest values so I can see that no matter what's happening, at least it's on the way, it's not in the way, so I'm not drudging, I'm not depressed, I'm not frustrated, I'm not weighing myself down, which slows down the process of achievement. So I basically find out how whatever I'm doing temporarily until I can delegate is helping me get what I want. When I do, I reframe what I'm doing I'm now inspired to do it temporarily. It increases the energy level, increases the probability of me getting somebody to delegate it because I don't get away from what's purposeful and what produces, it serves people. 
I make more income and then I can afford to delegate that. And that's the system. So either go and do what you love through delegating or go love what you do temporarily until you can delegate by linking. And linking is finding out how doing it temporarily is going to help you fulfill your mission and answer that 30, 40, 50 times until you're actually grateful to temporarily do it, to learn about it until you can delegate. But then the second you get somebody to delegate, get it off your plate. I learned many years ago, 38 plus years ago, I have not written a check, looked at a balance, a bank balance, looked, I don't even do anything to do with that topic. All I do is make sure I've got my automated structures into my investments. I can see what the net result is, the net worth. I can see the, the accumulation and projections. But I don't waste my time on anything that I can hire somebody for $20 to $50 or $60 an hour to take care of. Anything under the $100 mark, why would I be doing that? Anything over the $10,000 mark, I'm to do per hour. Anything under the $1,000 mark, I delegate. Because if I'm doing things that devalue me, so does the world. And if I do things that value me, so does the world. And the universe is giving me every single indication of that. And the moment I released it, it liberated me and allowed me to grow and accomplish and achieve and build the empowerment in all areas of life. So I'm, I'm absolutely certain that it's important to, to master the ability to delegate, but to see that no matter what happens in your life, it's ultimately on the way, but eventually it's going to be delegated. So take whatever you haven't been able to delegate immediately, ask how is it on the way until you can delegate, then delegate it as soon as you can get the person to delegate it, get it off your plate. And find somebody who loves doing it, so you can truly delegate it and not have to micromanage it. You can release it and get on what really produces, what really serves, what's really meaningful, that you love doing, that you feel you're called and designed to do. That one thing that makes you great. That way you can be great at something, build momentum around it, build a brand around it, and people identify you by that thing that you're great at. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining me.